Stampers, Sandy McIver from Stamping and Blogging here and I have a fun little technique for you today. This is called a triple time stamping technique card. I'm just going to move this up a little bit so that I can zoom in for you. Um, I recently got together with some stamping friends and one of them wanted to make this card and she was having a heck of a time so I thought well let's do a video for Sherry and show her how it's done so that she can have fun creating this card too. And as you can see there's lots of layers in this card and it looks quite difficult but really it's quite easy. Let me just show you all the pieces that you need. Okay starting from a piece of very vanilla you're going to cut one that is two and three quarters inches. The second one is going to be three and four and one quarter. The next one is going to be four by four and one quarter. Okay, so then what you're going to need is a mat that goes underneath each one of these. And I did this one in crumb cake. And so this one is two and a quarter by three and a half. This one is three and one quarter by four and a half. And this one is actually the card base, okay? So it is four and a quarter by 11 scored and folded at five and a half. And this is going to go on top of this. These two are going to layer like this. And these two are going to layer like that when we're finished, okay? But to create this cool technique, we're only going to use the first three for starters. And I like to actually glue them down. So a little bit of snail on the back and you're going to center them on top of each other just like this and when I say a little bit of snail a little bit goes a long way it will hold it in place for you okay and try and center them up as much as you can for my technique I actually added another technique to it I did a little bit of resist so the first thing that I'm going to do is bring in my Versamark and my embossing buddy and I'm going to rub it all over my card and get rid of all of my fingerprints and anything else that might be sticky on there. You just never know. Those little glue dots like to hang around and do all kinds of weird things. I've got my white embossing powder and I'm going to be using the fabulous Florette stamp set and I'm using this solid image from that set. Okay, And I'm also using the leaves from another very popular stamp set, Summer Silhouette, okay? So you need those guys. And I'm using a sentiment from a new catalog item and the catalog is not live yet, so I can't actually show you the stamp, but you can see the finished image once I get it stamped, okay? So for embossing, we're only going to use the flower. And what I did was, and this is gonna be hard for you to see, I stamped it once over here Okay, and what you want to do is you want to make sure that you've got lots of ink and you want to push really firmly and I'm working on a very firm surface, okay? I'm actually working on a piece of plywood with a piece of arborite over top of it, which is what I have at my embossing station in my studio because it's extremely firm and you get really nice stamped images from it. Okay, and the third one is going to go down here. All right, and I'm going to sneak in my little sentiment, which I'm going to stamp right there. Don't peek. All right, so we pick this little guy up, trying to not get my fingerprints all over it. I'm going to cover it with my white embossing powder. All right, I'm going to shake off the excess, and I'm going to heat set with my heat tool. Okay, I turned the video off so you didn't have to hear my heat tool. And I'm hoping that the light's going to hit this just right and you're going to be able to see that it's embossed. Maybe, maybe not. Um, you're going to shortly, okay? So if you can't see it now, don't worry. You will very, very shortly. Okay, so now I brought in my blue and I'm using... Baja Breeze, which is almost retired, so pool party would also work. You could also use turquoise if you wanted to. And again, I'm inking up my stamp, so three times, and I'm going to stamp one flower up here in this corner. Okay. And another flower on an angle down here and only partially on the last two pieces of cardstock down here. Now you see how I'm getting a halo effect? 
that's why we're going to be matting and when you're doing layers like this it's pretty impossible to get away with not having those and that's what's kind of cool about when you add the layers of the mats underneath that that all disappears so don't worry about it okay the other thing that you're going to need is your stamping scrub okay I've stamped I've misted my um, stamping scrub and I've got one wet side and one dry side because I'm changing colors so you want to make sure that it's good and clean before you pop to the next color and the next color is real red so again I'm inking up really really well and this time I'm going to go just above the sentiment just below the white flower which I can see but you probably cannot okay and firmly again but don't rock it otherwise you're going to get those nasty little marks that come off the side of the um, the rubber. Now I'm going to try and get right in here. I've got a little cluster of flowers going on over here so I don't want the whole flower but part of it is cool. Alright so there we go and see what I mean I got a little halo there because it's up on the layer thankfully that's probably not going to show because it's right in the crease um, and my mat's probably going to cover it. Let's hope so otherwise we'll have to get a little creative and do something funky with it. No worries that's what embellishments are for and that's why you embellish last right okay so now I've got my lucky limeade and it's also about to retire so you can use old olive and I've got the really nice leaf stamp set which I hope never retires I am loving this leaf all right so we need just a little bit of green and what I did was I left a spot there a spot there and a spot there because I wanted my card balanced okay so you're going to stamp once there re-ink, come around in from the top, and stamp once there, re-ink again, and I'm going to turn this little guy so that I can get in here where I want to get, and I'm stamping a third time right there, okay? And again, I have to clean this really well because my next color is crumb cake, and so I want to make sure that I don't have any green moving over to that new color, okay? And I also need to clean my flower because I'm going to be using it again as well. So you can never have these stamps too clean. And if you've got a scrap piece of paper around, it's always a good idea to make sure that they are good and clean. Because, of course, if you've been making four or five of these, um, your little stamp and scrub is going to be getting a little dirty and it might be time to go rinse it out. <laughs> okay. All right. So now we have crumb cake. And that is also going to match our card, which is why I decided to use it. And I'm going to ink up the flower again. And I'm going to start filling in a few of the holes that I left, okay, on, on purpose. One of the holes I left was right there. So I'm going to stamp it there. And one of the other holes was up in this corner here. And... Right down here, I want just a tiny little bit of the flower. Now I'm switching over to the leaves, and they're going to be my final fill-in, okay? So what I'm looking for are spots that need to be filled in. Here's one here. And I'm going to come in right over top of my leaf here because I, I want my leaf to get onto the center one and just above my sentiment pretty close all right i'm over this side i think i want a little guy to come in right about there and i think that might be good it is all right so i'm going to leave my crumb cake open because i'm still going to use it what i'm going to do right now is very carefully pull these apart and this is where Having just a little bit of snail on the back was a good thing. If you had a whole bunch, you might have a difficult time with this. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to bring in your pieces and you're going to start attaching your art pieces to their mats. Okay, so the big one actually goes on to the front of the card, just like this. And remember, again, there's a quarter of an inch all the way around for you. And it's very important that you remember to get that piece the right side up, okay? The rest of the pieces you can manipulate, but the card only opens one way. So do that one first so that you don't mess it up. Or set it aside for last so you don't mess it up. And we're going to attach that guy just like that. And this last little guy. 
my snail's almost empty. It's good. It's not running very well. All right. Goody, goody, goody. So before you put these together, you're going to get your little sponge and you're playing with your crumb cake. And what you're going to do is you're going to start adding some sponging over top of where your white flowers are. And you see how it's making the flower pop for me? Because the ink is getting inside and it's going around the flower and it's popping it right up. And we're going to do the same thing with the sentiment, which really makes it pop, which is very cool. And so I'm good with that one. And I have a little bit of white up here and a little bit of white here and a little more white over here. Isn't that cool how they pop? Such a fun technique. I just love it. All right, and this guy has a big old white guy down here. And just a little bit right here. And, of course, you can add a little bit of brown in a couple of spots, a little bit of crumb cake, just to lighten up your very vanilla a little bit. All right, so what we're going to do is you take your snail and attach the little guy to the medium-sized guy. Now remember that you're overlapping and see this doesn't line up very good. That's because this is the wrong way around. So pick something to line up. I'm using my green leaves and that's what helps me line this up almost perfectly. All right. So check your spots. You got a leaf here, a leaf there, and a leaf there. And I'm thinking that looks pretty darn good. All right, so the back of this guy is going to get some dimensionals. Here we go. I have my dimensionals. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit, I think. Oh, let's make sure we're going the right way here. <laughs> All right, so I think I'm almost ready to put this card together. Look at this. How sweet is that? All right, a little bit more over this way. This takes the longest is lining it up. The rest of the card is pretty darn easy. All right, and there we go. Isn't that sweet? It's got a little bit of a layer, but it's nice and flat, and it's nice and interesting, and I just think the color combination is really pretty as well. And once someone shows it to you the first time, it makes it a lot easier to understand. When you, um, A lot of people put too much stamping on the first time, and it gets a little bit overwhelming. So do a little bit of stamping first, and then go back in and fill in afterwards, and that might help you out. Hope you had fun with this technique today, and I hope you have fun making some. Happy stamping!